All right. Got it. Cool. So I'm sorry I can't see your faces, Jenna and Leanne. Um, but I know what you look like. So I'm visualizing <laughs> you. <laughs> and I have a very vivid imagination. So I, I'll do okay. Um, I just wanted to, to start by saying that there is a ton of stuff in linked into this um, sort of beefed up agenda that I sent you. Mm -hmm. The original agenda is posted um, with our meeting, at least I think it is now. I, I know we were having some issues with the um, web page, but what we can do after this meeting, what I would typically do is post the more robust agenda with meeting notes tucked into it um, so that the, whatever we work through in the course of the meeting is available to the public as well. And then we can decide whether we're posting recordings or not. And I think that's a much bigger discussion. So um, I'll just leave it at that. And um, before we dive in, did anybody have any questions about where things are on the agenda? Does anybody want to move anything around? I'm good with how it's laid out currently. <clears throat> All right, so can you guys can see my screen, right? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. for the folks at home. Okay, so the first thing that I did was I, I kind of bulleted out um, the things that, that we as a leadership team in the schools rely on the finance committee for. And, you know, some of this is, is like, directed by statute or DOE guidelines. And some of this is just our practice of um, what we expect from our finance committee. And um, Leanne has actually been through most of this stuff plenty of times. Um, she has been our finance chair in the past. So I'm probably um, preaching to the choir all, all evening here with this stuff. And, and I would invite you, Leanne, to jump in if there's anything that you think from your side uh, would be helpful for folks to know. Sure. Um, but my bullets are, are pretty simple, um, <laughs> simple and really complicated at the same time. Kristen and, and uh, Jenna and I met briefly on Thursday night last week to talk about what the AP warrants are, the, the check runs that we process. And there is a statutory requirement that members of the school board sign off on that. And in, and in most communities, the, the finance committee are the folks that, that do that work. And so um, I can answer more questions about that process, but I feel like um, we did kind of go over that. So I'm just gonna glance over it. Mm -hmm. um, Lead the school board budget development process. That's like six words and six <laughs> months, right? Um, so we'll spend some time talking about that down below. Review quarterly financial reports. Um, we have in in policy and, and in statute as well, I think, a, re a requirement to post quarterly financial reports, uh, which are basically a budget to actual financial statement. Mine are a little more, um, I think one of my superintendents called them poetic because I like to write words to go with my numbers and, and explain what's going on and what people should be looking at in those reports. Um, and the, the, the interesting and annoying thing about quarterly financials is that the first quarter ends at the end of September each fiscal year and it's always um, the, the numbers are in in the middle of October, and it's always the moment where the board is, is starting into transition with new members and school is opening, and we're doing the year end report from the prior year. And the first quarter gets very little love, it um, doesn't get focused on. The good news is that the first quarter isn't um, of critical importance to us in, in strategic planning because it's just the first quarter. There's not a lot of data there um, that's going to. Um, throw us off. Uh, I will say that I've already written the first quarter financial report. I just have an opportunity, haven't had an opportunity to present it. So that's something that we'll do 
as soon as the end of this week, um, what I might do is just send it out to you electronically and have you take a look. Um, receive updates on other fiscal matters. Uh, that's a really loose category. But there are situations where we may take on some, a project or we may be engaged in a process that has um, fiscal underpinnings or requires a certain knowledge of um, the budget financial policy. And so we'll rely on, on you guys to be a sounding board and to, to hear what's going on and maybe help us make some decisions. Any questions about that? I don't want to lecture, but I, I guess. I'm <laughs> no questions yet from me. Just shout, shout out. Um, I can't. I can't see your facial expressions. So. <laughs> um, so for the second bullet, I don't know if you had a chance to click into any of these links yet, but I'll pop it up here if I can. Oh, I hate the way this Looks like it doesn't have the right little tabby things. Thanks. That's a change. Come on, baby. I think it's partly because the speed adds in the way. All right, here we go. So this is just a super simple calendar um, to give you an idea of the flow of the work during the course of the school year. Um, I don't need to read all of these bullets to you, but it will kind of orient you to what's coming along. Um, highlights are, as I said, in, in uh, September and October, we're kicking things off at the end of September. Instead of doing the first quarter report in October, we're busy working on fiscal year financials, year end financials from the prior year. Um, and then in December, we have our new committees. And interestingly enough, look, that we get to review the quarter one financial reports. And then 10 minutes later, when December is over, we get to review quarter two. And then woven into all of this is the budget process. And we'll talk about that again um, in greater detail as we get to the next agenda item. Um, but budget, 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 um, in-house, Leadership Council work is going on from December through January. Public work is going on from March through April, um, uh, excuse me, March through May. Um, but there's report outs um, from the uh, Leadership Council to the Finance Committee along the way as we're doing our work saying, hey, you know, we've, you know, we've spent our time doing this and here's what's been going on. The loop because you're kind of the shepherds of the budget process as far as the board is concerned. I'm going to click out of the. Are all of your um, budget development meetings with the leadership council going to be in person this year? We've been kind of doing a little of both. Yeah. We've been doing um, all together meetings for preference, but then we've had some meetings that have been remote just because there's stuff, stuff going on in the building. So we have that option. What would you what would you think, Jeff, in terms of as we're planning those? Yeah, I think the, I think the will be in person. Mm -hmm. Well the full leadership council meetings we're, all we're, are always in person. Yeah. We're all yeah. we've been in person and, and then you know you get into these conversations where you're whiteboarding things and you're charting things out and saying priority setting priorities. Mm -hmm. so yeah. It helps. I mean you see I talk with my hands all day long. So I yeah the, the full the full leadership meetings um will be in person and have been all year. Um, we've done some K to five and six through twelve specific meetings. Um, in between that have been um, almost all of our leadership council meetings have been yeah. in person. And I suppose so, it would be interesting to see what the is doing with their yeah. stuff as well. Are they back to full? I think they're all in, in person. Yeah, they are in person. Yeah. Yeah. So when we do those two days where it's presented to the finance committee, like they're, I think the first year, Actually, my entire time it's been. Remote. You've been you've been COVID women, for, yeah, <laughs> for the budgets, but like that you getting like that big in a big room. Yeah, yeah, no, that's what we've done, right? Yeah. Historically, we've always, yeah, um, you know, been 
together to have that conversation because yeah again I think you know especially as you're talking about the things as they relate to the budget it just feels like there's a different relationship or you know between people when they're in a room together talking about something deeply versus yeah um, being online yeah mm -hmm. I having the opportunity to be with people because that interchange is a little more um, fluid and there's less hesitation to be more efficient but certainly you know we have all the options but yeah the the in March the two bullets at, at the top there finance committee preliminary review is basically before the full board workshops we say here you guys go and it could be just as simple as here's the budget book read it and ask me questions before we get together depending on the timeline that we're, we're working with yeah. but the sblc school board leadership council budget workshops they are i think number one the greatest tool we've added from my perspective since we started doing them um, because it's it's as kristen said it's two days you know, two sessions, and we've even spread it out over three sometimes, but in-depth conversations between the board and the leadership team, yeah. so that each individual school leader has the opportunity to present what they're asking for and why they need it, and to talk about, you know, the, the challenges that they're facing and um, the programs that they're championing and it's just it's a really um you get a lot of bang for the buck and what i feel like uh what i what i've heard and what i feel like is that you walk away from those sessions with um with everybody in the room feeling like they know where where we're coming from what what it is what it is that we're trying to accomplish and then into the broader world and being ready to um to champion that work so mm -hmm. Um, I don't know, Leanne, if you have any thoughts about it, because you actually saw them back in the olden days. I think your first year you had a, a real workshop with, I think I had special socks or something. Was that, was that that year? It was the year. I had some uh, rainbow unicorn budget socks that I was wearing. <laughs> Just can't get that online, you know? No. Um, <laughs> I did think that it was more effective last year, the way that we had broken it up into multiple meetings. Um, and I also really liked the fact that we were able to do like the raising of the hands on the Zoom feature so everyone had a chance to speak. Inevitably, there's usually one or two voices that kind of take over the meetings. Um, and it just sort of evened out the playing field a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, we did learn from experience that doing it all at one time, it was just way too much for people to mm -hmm. actually get much out of it. By the time you got to the end of the session, you were just like, yeah, whatever. Um, <laughs> so this de it definitely, there's a lot there and it takes time to um, to process. So I, I would totally agree with that. Um, all right, so I'm going to tuck this back into the background again. Um, again, that was like just super simple, just kind of thinking about the progress through the year and, and what our expectations are. Um, and the last bullet in this section, apart from the fact that I linked in our, our web page down here, the last bullet is uh, one of the things we're going to need to think about or you're gonna to need to think about is how you want your relationship with the town council finance committee to be. And I, I put some notes in here that um, back when we were developing the FY18 budget, uh, we came up with the slogan, one town, one budget. And that was in reaction to um, a lot of uh, political drama that seemed to be pitting the town against the school, the municipal budget against the school budget, and um, some really uh, unpleasant rhetoric about how if we had an extra teacher, then that meant we couldn't have an extra firefighter. And, you know, just trying to, um, some folks trying to really leverage this sort of um, 
a battle, I guess, between the school budget and the town budget. And so, so town and school leaders work together to overcome that and say, no, actually, you know what, we're doing what we're doing for the benefit of the entire community. And we really need to get away from this us versus them kind of stuff because it's all the same budget. Mm-hmm. So in the ensuing years, we had three years where we we're actually um, meeting jointly with the school board finance committee and the town council finance committee during the budget process to make sure that people were on the same page and communicating. Um, I will say that I met that with differing levels of enthusiasm, um, depending on the nature of those meetings. Sometimes I felt like we were just getting together to get together. And I won't say that's wrong because, you know, you're, you're building relationships. That's cool. Um, sometimes I felt like we were doing really good work. And um, last year, because we were building FY22 in a really weird environment, um, we kind of stepped back from that and just said, look, we're just going to do our own thing. We're going to present our budget to the council like we have to do and you know would do, but we're not going to spend a lot of time meeting with one another along the way. We're just going to do our regular stuff. Um, and that was fine too. And I feel like we communicated well. Um, but for me, it's a little bit of a, of a question mark about how we want that to be going forward and how much conversation we want to have with folks. And the, the interesting thing about the makeup of the, of the, count, of the uh, finance committee right now, if you look at who's on their team, John Anderson acted as the liaison to the school board last year, was it last year and the, and the year before? Or? Just last year. Just last year. Oh, right, he was just elected last year. And then of course, I think you're familiar with April Sider. <laughs> um, she's, she uh, might know a thing or two about school finance and about the school budget. And Paul, of course, has you know, been super supportive. So, I mean, I, I think there's opportunity there for collaboration. And I just wanna throw it out there that, um, you know, as we move forward towards the public part of the budget process, it would be cool to build a bridge there. And I don't really know what the bridge looks like, but just to make sure that we're engaging with those folks and and giving them an opportunity to support us too. Yeah, I I mean, I can see a a positive relationship there. I think one thing over the years, that we've maybe ironed out a little bit and part of why last year was a little different from my perspective is I think it took a little bit, this one town, one budget was great until you realize that town council actually plays a very different role in the budget than we do. So I think we've sort of spent a couple of years trying to figure out like, you know, cause we advocate for what, like, and there, there's just a different role. They play a different role, right? And how it gets put out into the community. So I think there's that's, it felt, felt pretty ironed out to me last year. But. Yeah, I think your point's well taken yeah. because, right, the school department is one of many departments that the town council oversees. Yeah. Yeah, and there, you know, there have been moments of sort of discomfort, I guess you could call it, of like, are we sitting at the table as equals or are we coming to the yeah. table? Mm-hmm. as a department to say, here, almighty ones, here is our budget. Right. Um, so there's a little of that, like, you know, what, it, who are we really in these conversations? And um, yeah, and I think it, you know, part of it depends on who's at the table yeah. and what their um, meeting style is, you mm-hmm. know, or what their, what their um, committee style is. Yeah. Um, what was the, the timing on those meetings with town council in the past? The joint finance committee, um, the first time we, that we did it in the first, it was the FY19 budget year, we, we started getting together during the budget process. So it was late. It was like in March, April, after the budget had already been presented. Mm-hmm. And then the next year, it was like, oh, well, we should really get together earlier so we could talk about big picture stuff and we could talk about strategy and we could talk about, you know, where we're headed. Um, so we met, I think, in January, maybe. Yeah. And um, and then had sporadic meetings throughout. And then we, we kind of replicated that when we were building the FY21 budget, which was in the spring of 20. 
So that to me, that uh, an, an early meeting like that, a joint meeting between finance committee of the council and the finance committee of the board of education, I think is can be very effective. Mm -hmm. As is some early meetings between town manager and superintendent, which right. can also be very effective. Right. And certainly something that I'm already partially doing and planning to do right. to have that connection because the more you're exchanging information and collaborating and functioning in that way um, early on in the process it can be very helpful yeah because to get to know like last year their their big thing was restoration right of positions that have right. been lost the year before so to right. know where their heads at getting into it would be right really helpful yeah absolutely and and i think you know you you get to share you're thinking about what the challenges are going to be you yeah. get to sort of put out there okay so this is the environment we're living in you know these are the things that we think we're going to need for resources these are going to be our big cost drivers um you know we have something going on that we need you to know about yeah yeah and, it was one, and if you get to share that it was one meeting it was usually mid-december um you know not any more than a, a, an hour or two and it was just exchanging. Here's here's what we're thinking is going to be, because um, because we haven't gone through the budget process yet, right? And so, but it's like here are some things that we're forecasting are going to be priorities for us. Right. And yeah. to get that from the school side, and then to get that from the multiple town department side a little bit, um, you know, it can be really helpful. So there are no kind of Hey, wait a minute! I just that came out of nowhere. I didn't realize that was a priority, and then it's already being presented publicly and yeah. that kind of thing. So your your kind of your path has already been kind of Laying carved out, mm -hmm. and and now you know what I mean. So if there's if there's a way to say, well, you know, and in a lot of cases for for schools, it's important because it's right around that January time frame where you're getting your state subsidy amount, and you know what you're dealing with in terms of. Um, if there's going to be additional resources that that's going to impact the mill rate just to keep what you have like you're starting to get some of mm -hmm. that information around that time too mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think Leanne has one. yeah leanne's got her hand up she's being super polite <laughs> i am just tough to like i didn't want to interrupt um one thing to keep, I, I just want to throw this out because it's a little bit of a um alternate opinion on that and last year we had purposefully not met with the joint meeting because of the year before where it was the you will come in at three percent and we did not and so it was it got really acrimonious in the fact that they felt they had given us a directive and our belief is we need to present what we need to be a successful district and our goal and their goal may not be in alignment and our responsibility is to ensure that we have what we need and we have those cold conversations in public, that it is a choice of, are we going to, this is what we ultimately would want. This is what we ultimately are driving towards. We can make some concession points, but not to have done all of that work without the public knowing what they're not going to be getting from us. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and I, I do recall that, you know, we walked away from a few of those meetings going, okay, well, that was dumb. Why did we even bother? And I think that that's the problem, right? It's it's what is the role of the conversation? What is the role of the people in the meeting? And, and our role is definitely to advocate for what the school department needs. But to Jeff's point, I think there, there could be room for at least sharing the ground that we're walking on and meeting, meeting, meeting aware and, right? and meeting early you have a much higher chance in my opinion of having the town understand um what you what you're advocating for and why and it strengthens your position if anything that we can do i'd be interested to know what tom hall thinks about you know where his team is at whether they are interested in that kind of collaboration i mean i just make the assumption because i know that john and april have both been very interested in the school side of things but am i misremembering i feel like last year was a good process um the year before was 
brutal. The year before was, COVID, was terrible. And it was yeah. And I'm last I say last year was great because we didn't have those joint meetings. We did our we work, they did their but work. I feel like we did, and I don't know if it was from us watching their meetings and knowing the direction they were headed, but I don't think like we were we invited went blindly. Yeah. 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 I feel like we did have some. I think we all watched them, and that was because I know that, like you, Sarah, and I were just dis would discuss what came out of their meetings. Yeah, I mean, your point is well taken, Leanne. I, I don't think that we're going to be meeting on equal ground necessarily because of the political nature of our two groups. Um, but I, I do feel like the, the opening the door to communication can't do us too much harm. I don't know, I guess we'll see, right? I might, I might be uh, overly optimistic, but maybe if Jeff could just reach out to Tom and as he would anyway, and, and see if there's any feeling on their part that they want to collaborate yeah. or, or even hear from us, you know? And maybe we can reach out to Paul and get their schedule and at least know when if they're If we know when they're meeting, what, we could yeah. listen to their meetings and talk about what, or hear them talk about what they're, their goals are at the very least. All right, so no decision needs to be taken about that, but it's just, you know, something I wanted to throw out there as part of our, our thinking and our process. And I'm gonna scroll up a little bit. Um, does anybody have anything more that they wanna add on that first part before I walk away? Away or I'm all set for now. All right, so um, in the second section, um, we've got talking about our meeting format and maybe scheduling and things like that. Um, and then there's just an absolute ton of cool stuff from last year's budget, um, which I'll just run through like super quick and tell you what you're looking at. Um, and then the last thing that I linked in was I, I linked in the meeting notes from um, the most recent school board finance committee meeting, which was in September, beginning of September. And there was some ideas thrown out there and some goals for the coming year that I don't want us to lose sight of. Uh, and then questions slash topics of interest is just you know a, a, a parking lot for what else we want to make note of and talk about. So should we talk for a minute about meetings? And I think uh, one of the things I've heard is that it will be useful for us to pre-plan when we get together and how often we need to get together before we get it on the budget calendar and then we get into budget season and everything gets crazy and we're meeting every five minutes. <laughs> so from my perspective, I'd, I'd definitely like to see us do a meeting a month yeah. until we get to that more insane bit. Mm -hmm. And I wonder how you folks feel about setting those dates in advance or is there a way that we can do I think Jenna you offered to maybe do a doodle poll or something like that to find what's the right time for us to consistently get together yeah uh, you know I think just scheduling with this many people is just is always going to be hard so yeah if we can establish that sooner <laughs> rather than later I mean are you guys up to, to figuring that out now. Yeah, yeah, as sure. well. Yeah. All right, let me just pull up calendars and stuff. <clears throat> and I'm and I'm definitely fine with a uh, monthly meets, and I I potentially will just be contacting you. Um, just to get information on little things that I have no idea about <laughs> in the meantime, yeah, I just think, all the filler I think, stuff. I think the monthly meeting for me, Jenna, is like, okay, I know I have that opportunity for us to be together. 
Mm-hmm. But if something arises and we need to address it, then you know, then you pull together an ad hoc kind of impromptu thing, or you have a conversation. Um, you know, I have worked with finance chairs where I'm on the phone with them quite a lot because we're trying to figure out just some logistics thing or answer questions or answer questions from the public. That's a real popular one. You know, I just got this email, what the heck do I do? Um, so I'm, I'm always ready to be in communication for whatever the need is, but I do think it will help us to have something um, that's pre-planned and, mm-hmm. and we're able to put it out there to the public as well. When you set agendas last year, did you and Sarah do those together? Is that yes. how you did them? Okay. Um, usually, and the collaboration there, um, Jenna, from from your perspective, is that you're telling me what it is that the finance committee would like to know or do or or talk about, and I'm telling you what tasks I need us to accomplish. Mm-hmm. And between those two things. Um, then we usually be able to frame out an agenda. And I think what we would usually do is send it then to the whole team and say, hey, do you want to add, subtract, edit? You know, is there something that's a burning question that we haven't thought of? Okay, let's see. Is it too simple to say, you know, maybe we'll we'll meet like the, the last you know, Thursday of every month, is that? I think that's kind of a cool way to do it. Like it is kind of simplistic, but if it's, if it's, you know, the, the school board beats, meets every other Thursday, if it's like that, it's, it's sometimes easier to remember and easier public to remember. We don't have anybody just watching us, do we, Diane? Let's look. Speaking of our public. <laughs> no, we do not. Oh. All right. So today's the eighth. And um, we could go for the last week of December, or we could go into January. And again, it's that quarter one report that's going to be floating around, but I can send that to you electronically and I can spend some time with Jenna just to orient her to the methodology of that. Um, do so, we typically though try to avoid committee meetings the way we do board meetings during the vacation week? During school breaks? Yeah, because I think families will sometimes yeah. try to take time off to yeah. do things. Mm-hmm. So, um, but there are, are there any school breaks that fall at the end of the month? Just December. Just December. Well, sure. Yes. Okay. No. That, that whole that. silly winter break thing. Can't come see me. Did you say a day of the week, Jenna? I mean, I just threw out Thursday as an example. Um, because in, in some years we've done it as a, um, we do the, finance committee at like four and then the board at seven, but you guys also have workshops. So that can get kind of long. Yeah. So I was just thinking how, how complex that would be if there's any sort of crossover with other. Well, the, with other the board today. meeting would never cross over if it was the last week, because the board meeting is the first and the third Thursday. That is true. Mm-hmm. That is true. Um, do are there other committees that have already established that? Because I know you guys serve on different committees. No, none that I'm none have been established. So we could be first. We could stake a claim. <laughs> if we said the last Thursday in January, I mean the last Thursday of the month, then our only issue would be that the 30th of December is during the holiday week. Mm-hmm. And so maybe we skip over that one and go to the sixth and then go to the 27th or something like that. That works for me. Yeah. Um, we decided this, we have a workshop on the sixth, right? Yeah, as I was gonna say, we have a workshop on the sixth. Oh, that's um, right. We just decided that yesterday. <laughs> yeah. All right, so if we, if we really don't have any pressing work to do, except that work that we could do offline, we could just go to the 27th of January and then go forward from there. Mm-hmm. Are we thinking this time, four o'clock? 
four o'clock on Thursday. I think four o'clock is. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Leanne. I was going to say I have a um, standing presentation to the execs that goes until four thirty. Um, but you guys can start, and I can just come late. I don't care. Well, we could make it. We could make it four thirty, or we could make it five to six, or you know, it's it can be what it is. Yeah, I mean, if we're okay with four thirty, I can just dial in as soon as that meeting ends. What do you? Yeah, guys? I'm fine with four thirty. That doesn't. That doesn't. That doesn't that fall on the same meeting that we have. No, that's a third Thursday. Okay. Just checking to see another oh, standing yeah. meeting that, that we have. Is Jeff. that your yep. cool yeah. meeting? Okay, yep. that's right. Nope, this works All fine. right, so, so I think we could say last Thursday each month, uh, starting on the 27th of January. The last Thursday in February also falls in vacation? Hmm. Does it really? Yes. Oh man. <laughs> oh, no. we were doing so well. I don't have my school calendar up. I just have my regular calendar. So, all right. So, school board is first and third. Do you want to do the second Thursday in February? I was thinking we could just change it and oh. instead of having it be the last one, it would be the second one. So that would be January 13th and February 10th. Sure. That seems fine. It's sort of the same pattern, but instead of the March 10th, April 14th, May 12th. I think, yeah, I think it, that works. I don't think it's affecting any April 14th long is break. Vacation week. No. Yeah, it's right before it, right? June 9th. It works, it works. So the 13th, January 13th would be the first one? Yeah. January 13th would be the first one. Is there someone taking notes of this meeting? Generally, one of the board members will take the committee notes. I've been known to put notes into the, um, into the agenda too, since I usually have it open. Um, I mean, I, like I haven't been taking. I haven't been taking well notes. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think we're like up to this point. It's really just been orientation. But I think now yep. that we're starting to make decisions, it would be helpful if um, if one person could be the note taker. I I'm don't have the ability to do that since I'm I've got it capitalized open here, so I'm here on the hour. And agreed to second Thursday each month. Yep. 4 30. And should we just make it for an hour and then we can always push it out if we need to? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds um, good. Starting January. We don't want to change money. Oh man, we could. <laughs> no, let's not. Let's not. Um, and so, should we continue to have in person slash remote option? Um, I would just have Kelly set up a webinar, the same as she did tonight, and maybe it would work better. With video. With video. <laughs> With the owl already set up before we're five minutes in. Yeah, I think the hybrid model at least currently allows for more flexibility um, for us to get here on time. Um, and I am, you know, in general, I like being in person because I like tangible items to look at. Um, but obviously, we've been operating remotely and we're all kind of more savvy nowadays with it and I think it's it's fine to, to continue hybrid. Yeah well and at the moment with the meeting owl we have a pretty good setup here so that if everybody decided they wanted to come they just come. Mm -hmm. And if they didn't we'd have the capacity to run it as a hybrid. So that's cool. Um, the 
we're already at 447 and I've just got this sort of big wild heap of budget stuff, um, which is mostly an orientation to things that um, two of you will have lived through. Um, but just a recap of, of what the work is really in terms of the budget. So what I've linked in here, this little school budget basics thing, I guess I'll pop that open real quick if I can. Yeah. Yes, you will, cool. Um, this is just a little mini narrative. Um, Kristen had asked the other night when we were talking about describing how the funds work the different funds in the school budget. Um, so I threw a little bit in there about the budget structure. And then um, I've also linked in this voter categories description sheet because the way that we organize the budget is kind of weird. It's like, why do you have middle school guidance over here and you have libraries over there and you have teachers in this spot and that's organized um, specifically under the statute that the state created for the voters. So that's an interesting little piece of information in that link. And then it talks about how the leadership team does their budget process, because that's the part that you guys aren't really sitting in on in the, be the beginning piece of it. Um, so there's a lot of commentary about how that all works. And then um, the budget book gets a little blurb, the budget book is special, and then the public process. So that's a nice little read, um, budget, budget 101. And I know but, you have a lot to get, I don't want to slow you down, but <clears throat> one thing that has sort of in my mind, and I know we didn't do them last year, but we did the year before was, and I think I did them, I think I did one with you at Eight Corners where one of the board the members sessions. will go to the listening sessions. Yeah, we were just talking about that the other day because what, what we what we went to last year in hybrid mode was that the building leaders ran their own because okay. we didn't want to be in and out of each other's space. Yeah. So you didn't attend? We did them. not attend. Oh, we okay. could. Yeah. Um, in fact, I sat in on the high school one just because I was interested and um, you know we were invited to them. Different uh, cult central office mm -hmm. leaders sat in on different ones. Yeah, we all shared that. We all went out responsibility. And, you know, like, check it in. People sat in yeah. on different ones. And took notes. Um, but we didn't go physically into the schools. And we've mm -hmm. had some debates about how effective that was. And I think, which one did you go to? We did them last year online, point? now that you say that. And then mm -hmm. one came. Mm -hmm. um, I went to Eight Corners. And it was so We had a good meeting at Eight Corners because there yes. were so many people there. Yep, and um, that same theme just came up like it was a really eye-opening thing as a board member to hear the teachers speak so passionately about the support that they needed in their mm -hmm. classrooms. It just added something, I think, when you were going through the budget to think about it. But yeah, so many teachers came and shared. Right. Mm -hmm. So yes. I, I think what we were struggling with was the, the uh, well, how to, how to manage that and to make it effective and yeah. to hear all the voices. And, you know, I, I think Eight Corners was a great example in the one that, that we were talking about that I was at because it was a big crowd and yeah. there was a lot of interchange and there was a lot of discussion. Um, I went to one at the middle school and it was two people. Yes, I think one like that scene and, and was two people. Right, yeah. and so so it was like, how do you engage and, and how do you make sure that your building leader yeah. is facilitating those kind of kind of conversations on on the regular kind of and and you know making it more integrated into their conversations with their regular faculty meetings yeah, and, and mm -hmm. their leadership meetings and and that's kind of how it was done in the past so we're, we're kind of feeling like we might tip back more in that direction um, but i do recognize the value of that sort of witness from the ground floor yeah. for you guys so man was that something that you guys added like the year before i was on the board yes we did okay do you think that's something that's important to to continue I don't want to put you on the spot. It's okay. Um, yes and no. I think 
the piece that makes it really hard because some of the feedback that I had gotten from folks is that they're uncomfortable with having that conversation in front of others, or in front of their building leadership, um, because okay. sometimes it feels like they're not towing yeah. the company line. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But I do think for the folks that come out and say what they're feeling, it is wicked eye opening because I did one at Pleasant Hill and it was just great to hear the feedback. Yeah. Um, you know, if if you've got people who are really strong and are willing to say what's on their mind, it's great to hear it directly from their mouths. Yeah, I think I think a little bit the worry for me is that then there's an expectation that the building leader is going to take that feedback or that input and they have the responsibility of crafting a budget that may not at the end of the day look exactly like that individual really wanted it to look yep and so you don't want to do like a bait and switch and say hey tell me your wishes and i will make it so and then santa didn't bring the pony and it kind of stinks right so, I mean, there's that balance in it, yeah. but I, I so get what Leanne is saying because I really enjoyed those sessions myself where I was hearing like really what's going on on the ground floor and, you know, what the, the true experience is. So I think we have to brainstorm a little bit about yeah. as a leadership team about how to bring some of that witness into the process without it necessarily being that same format. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Good question. Um, so the next link is the old budget calendar from last year. This one is the, um, the public calendar, the public portion of the process. And it includes all the meetings that are listed out in that other document of all the stuff that we do to get to budget. Um, I'm working on a new version of this. I won't have the town's input to that of what they're doing until uh, usually January for them to actually nail down their dates. But usually what Colette and I do, Colette's the town manager's assistant, um, we'll just collaborate on kind of taking the old calendar and bringing it forward and putting the dates right and then share that with Tom Hall and, and his team. And they figure out, you know, do we want to do what we did before or do we need to wiggle that at all? Um, the biggest attachment in here is the budget book. Um, and I talk about how the, the, in my school budget basics, the budget book was invented uh, to replace a, a list of line items on a spreadsheet with a summary page that was our budget back in the olden days. It was sad. It was in like Times New Roman and it was in really small font and it was terrible. Um, that's at the back of the book now. And the book itself is now this marvelous celebration and explanation of what goes on in school. So, um, you know, I think that is another thing that I'm really proud of that we've developed over the years. And I think, you know, the goal is to make the school budget accessible to somebody who's not, you know, into looking at spreadsheets, like what's really going on, why do you really need these resources? Um, there's two video streams linked in here. Those are the budget workshop that uh, okay. Kristen was talking about. So that's actually the recording of those workshops, the two days that we did last spring. Um, and then this budget process worksheet, this out here. This is another tool that we've used um, to kind of um, document the changes in the budget as we go along and kind of keep a little tally of what's gone up and what's gone down and what's happened during the budget process. Um, this has been really helpful, I think, as a tool for the public when we go in and out of these meetings and first reading the second reading and committee work and, and we're trying to say, well, what did we say we were gonna do about that? And, and it's all in here. So this is laid out so that your first section is what's passed at first reading. And then the middle part is all the work that you do between first reading and second reading and taking your votes. Um, so that's all the, all the adjustments that we've made, some of them because we've made decisions, some of them because we've got better information. So like you see, Anthem rates went down. That's not because I decided I didn't want to pay as much for Anthem. It's because Anthem came out with their premiums and they were lower than what we expected. 
but then there's choices in here as well. So that's another, I think, uh, another effective tool. Um, the things that we adjusted, that we decided we were gonna adjust before we voted. This is the capital budget section, and then the impact on the budget overall between first and second reading. Okay, if I remember correctly, I think council appreciated seeing this. Well, I think it's, this way yeah, and, and there's so much kind of horse trading going on mm -hmm. in the during the process that you've got, um, and unless you're keeping the scorecard, now I'm mixing my metaphor, but you, you, you don't, it's like, what What did we say we were going to do about that? Were we putting that one up or taking that one down or moving this one there? So this is like, this is the running tally of the choices that you've made and the, and the, and the changes that you've been able to make. So that's kind of a useful piece. Um, so that's all what's in there. And that's kind of like budget 101 budget process 101. Um, and I thought if I just throw all that material out there, then then you guys can take a look and um, a couple of, through a couple of lenses, one is to say, yeah, we like that. That's a cool way to do it. Um, let's have more of that. Um, two is, oh, hey, I really wish we could look at it in a different way. Is there a way that we could reorganize things? Um, and three is if they bring up, if it brings up questions, like what did we, why would we be doing that? Yeah. What was our choice? Um, you know, what's going on here? So there, Jenna's gonna love watching those videos. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I think you might have to do them in little chunks, but it, it's like it's like Netflix now. You can just watch it when you have time for an episode. Yeah, um, you know, something you do right before you go to sleep. You know? <laughs> oh, don't think you're no, don't. <laughs> yeah, you could you can read a few spreadsheets before bed, right? <laughs> um, so we're we're basically right at five o'clock. Do we want to take a minute and peek into the meeting notes from September first, or do we want to just leave that for the next one? Um. I think just bearing in mind other people's time. If I, I have the time, I can look over it quickly. I don't know if you guys uh, have any, any any other engagements. Um, I'm fine. Going over it. You want to just peek in? Yeah. Well, then we'll just pop it open here. And you know, I, again, I don't think this is. Oh, it's doing that funny thing again, isn't it? Open up view. Yeah, that one. There she goes. All right. So this was uh, September 1st, the start of the school year. Um, our last get together was to just kind of brainstorm what it was that we thought at that time was going to be our focus for the school year. Oh, I didn't even think about capital reserve fund tonight. That's I was cool. just going to say about that. that we yeah. were thinking about workshop. We topics. were thinking That's about a workshop. So definitely I'll, a good one. I'll put that on our January um, agenda. Uh, some stuff about working with the policy committee, adjusting it. Um, we decided last night to drop that for now. Is yeah. that right, Leanne? Is that what we just talked about last night? Um, I didn't the, think that we had. Uh, we I thought we... Have... No, go ahead, Kristen. What? Weren't we waiting on the charter stuff to be done by council? Yes. Uh, That's right. So that, yeah, there's no point in our messing around with our policies to align with with something, something that change, is yeah. going to change yeah um collaboration with town council that and we touched on that quite a bit just now um and of course i think we all kind of have the uh turf field in the back of our minds do we have the k-12 uh, the k-2 building solution on here. The uh, new school. The building thing. committee stuff. 
I mean, that that isn't necessarily the work of the finance committee, though. It's kind of the work of the board as a whole and, and the leadership team. So, yeah, I mean, will any financial requests for that come through if there's more funding needed? Well, yeah, we just talked about the capital budget yeah. and what the needs would be. The other thing that we didn't really talk about tonight is the grant funds, the ESSER funds and the CRF funds. And, and there was a wish on the part of this team in September to, and all right, right through last year, it was to make sure that we kept communicating out to the public, hey, you got $4 million, what'd you do with it? Um, so that I think going into the next budget cycle, I think we're gonna hear, hey, you got $4 million, why are you back here? <laughs> so um, I think that'll definitely be part of our conversation. I think that the um, the turf and track one is going to be large. Like that's something we'll probably the whole board's going to be curious Engaged, to hear where yeah. that has netted out. I don't know where you guys are at in the process, but yeah, that's yeah, a big, I think Jeff big. is working on some notes um, to, yep. to get out to the board. Um, we've had a couple meetings with Woodard and Curran so far, um, which is the engineering firm. Yeah. Oh, I was talking about like taking over. Oh, you mean that the management? Yes, uh, the management. Yeah, because that has huge budget implications, yeah. Yeah. taking over the management of school facilities really right from community services yeah and we haven't had any kind of substantive conversations about that at all yeah. Yeah. that's just um, been that's just been floating on the horizon yeah and, and i think floating out there like what would that even look like but yeah. there have been no substantive right. conversations or plans along those lines at all i think that's at something that, that's more of a goal for todd Sousa than it is for anybody else but i know that tom yeah. wants to engage with stuff in new conversations now that we've had a change in leadership so so that's a thing for sure and that's on there um right we did some of these things we did uh sarah was thinking about some ideas about the grant funds and how to put them in a pie chart or something interesting. And I kind of never really did anything about that. And she decided to not run for re-election. So the heck with her. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're watching, Sarah. <laughs> she has nothing better to do. Um, but that's definitely, I mean, that that's definitely on my to-do list is to make sure that we're reporting out on all these federal grants and giving the public a little bit of an update as we head into the new do you mean just the COVID stuff or do you mean like all the Title I stuff that we always get? I mean get? COVID stuff just because COVID the stuff, stuff that we always get, all of the stuff is always in our quarterly financials. Right. And, um, you know, it's it's always a topic of conversation. Like local entitlement in the normal world is the biggest one that we get. That's the special education grant. Um, so that always comes up in the context of the special education budget and it's, you know, it's on the financials. Yeah. But the the COVID money is what everybody got excited about. Yeah. Because it's like, you know, big bucks raining from heaven, um, exciting things to be done in, a, in an exciting environment of a pandemic. Um, so that's really what I'm thinking of okay. is, is to say, hey, yeah, we're kind of, you know, we closed the books on that. There's a little bit left. There, there will still be a little bit that we can use in F423. Yeah. Just a smidge. Mm. I um, ask because I personally get like, not confused by, but I feel like I have no grasp of how the regular title funding impacts the budget that the board works on. Like I know that that's separate from what we do, but it has to have implications for us, right? I guess I've never seen how they interact. So I think it yeah, be I mean, and the other reality is that the title funding that we get is so limited. Yes, because for sure. of our status. Yeah. That you know, we're not talking about millions of dollars. We're you know talking in the range of just over a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, I think that's like even more an important thing yeah. to put out there. I yeah, you might hear of other towns who get a million dollars from Title One. That's not right. us. That's it's lots very, of millions. Very, lots very of millions other towns get. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Small. yeah, I I'm I'm going to be working on the um the narrative, the storytelling piece of the quarter one financials. I've got the numbers because I need to know what's going on and I analyze them. But 
um, that might be a, a good place to sort of plug in some, hey, this is what Title I is, and here's how much we got, and, yeah. and, and actually call some attention to the, the function here's of how it. it's allocated. Uh, yeah, I mean, I know Leanne and I mm -hmm. last year tried to, I mean, we would sit there and be like, oh my God. Look what they got! Oh my God! Like and the, just and the other that was based on Title One. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really eye opening to it's see based on free and re the, reduced lunch. And but the are they first, changing that? Like, I think that's, that's going to be a different thing to talk about. Right? Well, the first and the first round of COVID relief fund relief funds, the formula was created by was not based on Title One allocation, yes. mm -hmm. and it was based on straight up numbers. And and so the percentage it was it was everyone benefited. Everyone benefited, and so the amount was off the charts in comparison to the the second and third rounds, which were yes. much more tied in and focused, obviously, on those Title One numbers, which means you know Scarborough and and other similar districts got virtually nothing, or not virtually nothing, but much, 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 much less. Yeah, there was one round when it was virtually. Yeah, yeah. hundred hundred thousand was the littlest yeah. one. Right. Yeah. Was gen, gen ed one, but yeah, so I'm gonna think about trying to incorporate into the narrative for the quarterly report a little bit more info. Yeah. Um, because I think that would be a good place for it because if somebody's looking at your financials and reading the story, and yeah. it's just a label at this point, so mm -hmm. why not explain it a little bit further? We spend so much energy focusing on the operating budget and the things that we actually have more control over. Yeah. Um, that you know we lose sight of these things, and then people start to wonder about these mysterious funds that are yeah. that are out there. Yeah. I also have some curiosity about what these free lunches are doing to our budget and how how that interacts because we don't we lose money on that, right? So we're going. Are we going to be making up, or is that not true anymore? Um, we're at the point right now where we're actually bringing in quite a bit. Oh, good. Uh, uh, which is awesome. The reimbursement amount. I was just talking with. It's Peter. higher than the cost. Uh, I the was just talking that, That's that amazing. That, and we're we are serving virtually every student in the district. Like right. the, we, I was talking with Peter today about it. Just checking in with him, and he was saying, "What like you know you've got the the demand is through the roof. I mean it's like quadruple the number of meals, probably more than that." than what we were serving breakfast is like pre COVID unbelievable on top of the fact that we've had yeah breakfast and then I mean almost every single kid in the district is eating school lunch. So that's so making it more cost effective to do it. Right. Because well, your labor scale. cost is for, right. for example, he was saying he was saying the, the reimbursement amount went, you know, for I don't know if this was like per month or per year or whatever. It was just like it was like 10 times <laughs> right, because what happens is they'll reimburse you, let's say, like four dollars and fifteen cents for every lunch, and the lunch costs two dollars and thirty-seven cents to make. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So on a per student basis, you're making like a quantifiable amount of money, but that and then we have to obviously build in our other costs, right? right? Like our labor costs, which is sort of where we were losing right. out before. Right, right. right. Was, and we were, we're running a deficit, down. but that's, yeah. you that's, know, that's, um, that's, mm -hmm. that's looking that's pretty huge. good. The so one place where mm -hmm. I think, Not a worry. one place awesome. where I think the loss of the free and reduced status is gonna yes. because if they don't, yeah. or not yeah. just title one, but any of any grant that's based yes. on me, yeah, that's been the default measure of need in the state of Maine forever. Yeah, like oh well, let's check your free and reduced numbers, and and right now, uh, our free and reduced numbers are like you know five percent because nobody's filling out probably the probably underreported because, because nobody needs to fill out the forms because they don't need free lunch. So that's that's every district is saying that now, but you know, and hopefully every district sort of goes down and it's like grading on a curve where everybody's. Yeah, moving in the same direction. But that was a that was a real worry early on in, in COVID was the 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 deficit that you're yeah. running with food service because yeah. we just all districts made the decision. You know what? We're feeding everybody. We're just doing it. Right? Yeah. We're just doing it. And yeah. um, but the the state the state stepped up and has covered yeah. that, and so that's, that's awesome. no longer at least right now anyway no longer a concern. Right. That's yeah. Good, that's for now, back in my mind. it's yeah. It for now it's it's. it's 
it's great. It's a win-win because the yeah. kids are eating and we're not losing yeah. money on it. And um, yeah, it's it's a wonderful thing. And nobody has to worry about whether they can afford it or not. Beautiful thing. Right. I got so many tabs open here. Let's see where I'm at. So I think that we accomplished a whole hell of a lot of stuff. And can I say that on, on a, what are we? Recording? You did. Yeah. You did. Say <laughs> All right. And we don't have any like bleeping out. We can't edit. We can't, we can't go back and take that out. Yeah, I'm sure that, that nobody in our community has heard the expression hell of a. Um, I'll say it again. I think, um, Jenna, probably what the next thing I would do is maybe get a little draft agenda going for the 13th of January and um, share that out and see if there are some things that we, you know, want to tackle right up front. I just made a few notes about what, what that might be. Um, and then we can go from there. We can figure out what we want to do. And the cool thing is that January and February We'll just be updating like quick little sound bites about what we're doing with the budget process, but it won't be until we get into March that we really have to fight down and, and mess around with budget. And did we land on a time? Because I'll have Kelly publish yes. these on the. Oh, cool. Yeah, 4 30 to 5 30, I think is what I yep. said. Okay. Starting on January 13th, every second yep. Thursday. Perfect. So yeah, she can even set up the little webinars and things mm -hmm. ahead of time so we're not messing around with it. Mm -hmm. Jenna, do you feel overwhelmed? <laughs> um, it is a lot to digest all in one sitting and I know I'm not gonna grasp it all in in just this one session. Um, so yeah, I look forward to our upcoming meetings just to get filled in some more also on all these little nuanced things. Um, you're absolutely right, Jenna, and, and please do not hesitate to reach out to me at any time um, to just, you know, if, if you're reading through something and you're like, what does this mean? Help me out. Just just give me a call or, or email me. And Yeah, well, I already I already ran off all of these copies, uh, oh, gosh. you know, my nighttime to, reading. <laughs> get you some new, new toner. <laughs> And if you need a copy of last year's budget book, we probably have, I have a first, some copies I have a here. Yeah. If you you know want to um, save yourself some some printing and a few trees, <laughs> sounds like a good plan. Of course, okay. yeah, I have the, one of those on my desk, and the town has a budget book too, so we're part of that. So I have one of those as well. Um, but yeah, lots to absorb for for certain, absolutely. I've, I've only been doing it 20 years and I'm starting to catch on. <laughs> There's a lot. A lot. You'll, you'll get there. Yeah, absolutely. I, mean, I believe in you. Yeah, no, no doubt. And I, and I think, uh, you know, having you guys who have been on the board for a little while longer than I have uh, can provide a lot more insight also on a lot of these. Oh, yes, definitely ask us any questions. Deanna has a better memory than me, to be honest. Mm -hmm. it's teamwork. It's teamwork. Are we are we good, guys? You want to go have supper? Yes. Yeah. But we didn't do public comment, but we have no public, right? There is no public. No public, therefore no public comment. Correct. Well, thank you. Hey. Yeah, thank thanks, you. guys. Have a great night. You too. Thank you. Bye -bye. See you soon.